When I was a director, my staff would often come up to me and say, I don't understand why this child is doing this. Why are they doing this? And it occurred to me that a lot of them didn't have any background in child development or understanding the different social emotional development stages of the kids they were working with. So I think it's really important to talk to your staff about understanding these, even at the most basic level, so that when some of the times that the kids do something that might seem just maybe a little irritating or might seem kind of defiant, that the staff understands this is totally normal for them to do. And then let's think about what is a constructive adult response to that behavior. So let's take a look at um, some of this information. As we're looking through this, we're remembering that this is typical development. You might have kids that fall um, a little younger in their development or a little older in their development. It just depends. So first we have pre and early elementary socio-emotional development. Pre and early elementary will be roughly five years old to eight years old, give or take. So their developmental needs are that they need to take initiative and feel purpose. And they also need to understand boundaries without taking it too personally. And family and home will still be very important. So some of the behaviors that come up because of this are that they're going to ask why a lot. And that can be very frustrating, especially to a younger staff who might say, why do they keep asking me why? You just asked me a why question. <laughs> but um, let the staff know that they're curious and they're going to ask why, and they just want to know the answer. So give them an answer. Um, and they might take initiative if encouraged and guided because they need to feel purpose. So they need to push them a little bit sometimes and say, it's all right, let's try this out. Um, and they might not take initiative because they're afraid of doing the wrong thing. So, like I said, they might need, just need a little push. Um, and their need to understand boundaries might result in being a little aggressive in taking actions, and that's all right. It's just something that can happen. So, some constructive adult responses to this are that they're going to encourage the child to try out new ideas. And they're also going to encourage that curiosity and imagination. They're also going to encourage independence. And they're going to do it firmly but gently. So this isn't a go figure it out on your own kind of situation, but all right, well, what are some ideas that we could try out here? And giving them that little push to get them to be more independent. And also reinforcing limits gently because they do need to understand boundaries more, but they might take it very personally. So sometimes those limits need to be reinforced a little more gently with this younger age group. Next we have elementary school, which is going to be closer to eight years old to roughly 12 years old or so. So some of their developmental needs, um, are they gonna, they're gonna need to feel like they're good at what they do. We see this a lot, right? Where kids get frustrated just by starting to do something and they say, I don't wanna do it anymore, I don't understand, this is stupid. That's because they need to feel that they're good at what they do. They also want to carry an idea to completion. Um, and the school and the community is going to be more important, become more important to them. So some of the resulting behaviors that you'll likely see is that they're eager to learn new skills, that they want to try out new things and find out what they're interested in, but they also want to see clear signs of achievement. Because if they feel inferior, they might lose interest. So it's important for you to say, you know, Wow, I am so impressed with the, that, you know, how you tried that out, and that's fantastic. So show, that, show what they're achieving. They're also going to pay close attention to rules, and when they are or are not followed, I think everyone here can understand that, right? How often do we hear, they're cheating, they didn't do that, that's not fair. That is perfectly normal behavior for elementary school students. So what are some constructive adult responses to this type of behavior? It's important to acknowledge achievement at different levels so that they always feel good at what they're doing. Um, so you can focus on steps of an activity. So you can say, wow, I love how you did such a great job dribbling that ball. That's fantastic. And the kid might say, but I didn't make any of the shots today. You could say, well, that's all right. You know, I, I think that you are really great at dribbling. That is really impressive. I, I've seen how hard you've worked at it and you've gotten really good over the past couple days. 
And so you're acknowledging that achievement, even if it's just partial achievement of their goal, but you're showing them how it's going. And if you can focus on steps of an activity and how they lead to an end product, then they're going to be more interested in carrying that idea to completion. And so you're going to say, all right, we're going to do this today. We're going to come back to it tomorrow. That's all right. So focusing on steps. And it's also important to model that it's okay to make mistakes and really highlight improvements about how they've done. Um, so if they make a mistake, say, that's all right. Let's figure out how we can do it differently next time because you don't want them to feel inferior about what they're doing and then withdraw from it. Also, be very conscious of fairness. This can be difficult, but always before you start a game, um, I always encourage the staff to think about, is there any arguments that might come up in the way that we're playing the game right now? And if so, how can we prevent those arguments? How are we going to make sure that everybody feels this is fair? So always being very conscious about fairness. All right, so next we're gonna look at middle school. Middle school, we'll say 11 or 12 years old to about 14-ish. So their developmental needs are that they're starting to develop empathy and more awareness of the world and that they need to develop their identity and identify their role in the world. So they need to be more empowered. Um, <clears throat> and peer relationships are gonna be more important and maybe family a little less so. So they're gonna start questioning rules and become very opinionated because they're defining their individualness. They're defining their opinion and their identity. They're gonna be very highly sensitive to social norms and fitting in, and they might end up being rude or disruptive if feelings of powerness or insecurity arise um, because they need to feel empowered. They need to know that they have power in a situation, and so they might push back if they don't feel that. So some constructive adult responses for that are to offer opportunities for leadership. So engage them in ways that they can be empowered within the program. You can also offer opportunities for expression so that they can develop that identity and show that identity within your program. And also offer time and space for introspec introspection or reflection <clears throat> so that they can become more aware of the world and also themselves. It's very important to not get into power struggles because they will want to win them. They need to be empowered. They are finding their identity and their role and their identity does not, they do not want their identity to be the person who gets pushed over, who doesn't stand up for themselves, that kind of thing. So find a way that they can save face. If there's a power struggle going on, let them walk away into the other room and say, that's all right, and address it later. Obviously, there's some situations where this doesn't work, but thinking about it that way, that you don't want to get into those power struggles. So, as you're thinking about these different um, socio-emotional developmental stages, it's important to think about, do your staff know about these? Are you seeing them frustrated by some of the actions with your kids that are really just completely normal ways for these kids to behave? And then they need to have those tools for constructive adult responses. How can I look at this and respond in a constructive way? You can talk this over with your staff in a couple different ways. You can go through the information with them, very black and white, you know, here's the different developmental stages, here's what they look like, and here's the constructive adult response. Just be very clear about it, you know, go through it and things like that. You might then expand the conversation to say, do we see this in any of our kids? What are some examples that we can talk about? All right, that's a great example. How, how do we think that maybe now that we've talked about this, we could maybe respond in a more constructive way? You can also use scenarios. Sometimes scenarios help people be a little more removed from the situation and say, okay, well, I don't know this child necessarily. I don't know all the information, but if they're in my program, I would probably address it this way. And especially now that I have this more information, about the different developmental levels. But it's important to share this information with your staff if they don't already know it, because it really can provide them that new perspective to think about, all right, I'm thinking more about being more aware about behavior and managing it. So what is the child trying to say? Is this part of their regular socio-emotional development? And are they saying to me that they're frustrated by not succeeding at a task? 
And if so, how can I then, you know, address it in a more constructive way than just being upset that the child's acting out? So think about now just how you could, just to yourself, think about how you can use this information to really support your staff in better understanding the kids they work with and the different um, behaviors they might have or the different ways that they might act while at the program.